Welcome beautiful people of the internet. My name is Jim Lee from Climate Viewer News and today is July 8, 2014. We're over here looking at Climate Viewer 3D on the Modus Terra 367 band. Uh, we'll start out by looking at the daily storm log. These W's are wind damage, the H's are hail. As you can see we had lots of wind damage and hail associated with the storms moving across central United States and up here in the northeast. Uh, watch out for that wind, obviously. So we're over here, like I said, we're on the 367 band, which really highlights uh, ship tracks and uh, SRM, solar radiation management, pollution from ships. Uh, let's uh, take a look at that real quick. We have a couple tropical storms here moving off the coast. They're moving away from us. Real beautiful shot of that one here. Oh yeah. Um, and you can see the ship tracks in the plumes there. That's these straight white lines that you see. You can see they're coming from ships. Those are all man-made cloud formations. Um, more right here. Yesterday we really didn't have any and uh, today they're back in full force. So these ship tracks, the pollution that comes from the ships crossing the Pacific, contribute to the formation of clouds they're cloud condensation nuclei. Here you can see them. And right here, you can actually see where the ships, the ships right there, the tip of that in here. And what happens is they start out as thin little white lines and they slowly grow and they grow until they just mix right in and make a nice big fat cloud for everybody. And this is up near um, Alaska, near the Aleutian Islands. Um, and of course, we do have a large tropical storm over here, just below Japan, and it is expected to turn and make landfall over Japan. So Fukushima, heads up. You've got a big one on the way. So real quickly, with SRM and the ship tracks, also uh, constantly referred to the chemtrails, um, we do have a tracker here on Climate Viewer 3D clear all these out real quick and I'm going to come down here to places and I'm going to scroll to the top and hit international flights. Now this is not all the flights um, in the world but it's a good portion of the international flights. We'll give you an overview, a general idea of what we're uh, dealing with on a daily basis here. And you can see this starts out at 4.06 in the morning and then it's going to work its way up and then the flights are going to take off. And you can see all this in real time. And then this is at our current time, which is 11 o'clock. There's that many flights in the air. And as you can see, these will constantly update and move around. Um, these are in real time. You can click on them and it'll tell you what the flight is and where it's headed. Um, but for me, what's interesting about it are these little trails. Now, each of these flights, it'll leave a line behind it showing its flight path. And what you'll start to notice if you watch this over time is that there are certain corridors that are constantly fly, flown. Um, one of which is this, what I like to call the chemtrail highway down here over uh, White Sands in uh, Texas. This straight line right here, constantly traveled. Typically, if you come, especially in the winter, you're gonna see contrails that are so large that they cast shadows on the ground. Uh, very interesting stuff, but this is a great way to track the flights and see their flight pass um, in on our 3D app live. Uh, that's a lot of pollution. It's a lot of pollution, people. So with that, um, let's move on. We're going to go to our place of the day. We're going to cover the chemical weapons munitions dumped at sea. This is by the James Martin Center for Non-Proliferation -Pro Studies. And what you'll notice is many places around the world Soviet Union confirmed disposal of admin site smoke pots okay that's weird let's come over here I'm gonna um, show you the one near Charleston where I'm at I'm in South Carolina right off the coast of South Carolina in Charleston you can see site Baker and on site Baker you can see that they were dropping mustard gas, mustard, U.S. produced mustard, lewisite, and CG bombs, as well as containers from projectiles. They were all dumped near these coordinates. This is in 1946. So there's several of these bulk containers of mustard gas all dumped right there 
very sad stuff with references, of course. Um, and that's right off the coast of uh, South Carolina. There are more further at sea here. If you go through these, um, I mean, some of these will just break your heart when you click on them. So this, this could, I mean, there's so many locations just for this one layer, uh, it would just take you forever to, to learn about it. So look at the scary stuff, make it known, let people know um, our oceans are a dumping ground. We do have uh, many concerns still yet to be addressed. Um, I don't think any, I've not seen any studies that do break down what effects of, um, or if there is any kind of monitoring to see if these things are leaching. Uh, we'll just have to keep our fingers crossed and uh, hope that these do get cleaned up one day. So with that, that's our um, pollution file for today. And we're going to cover one of our places as well, since we were talking about chemical weapons. Well, why don't we just do the nuclear? So operational nuclear reactors of the world. Um, this took me a very long time to do. Um, they're color coded for the type that they have. Um, red being a boiling water reactor. Uh, green is a pressurized water reactor. And each one of these, you can click on them and you can see the pictures, there's information links down here at the bottom. Um, very interesting stuff. You can also come over here, you just expand it by category and you can see each one in each um, country. Click on the little blue link to see the contents. Click on the icon here to fly to them. And in blows right here. And you can see that I have gone and marked them directly where the buildings are and you can come in and check out all the nuclear reactors of the world. We are also gonna add uh, non-operational power reactors, and these are like research reactors, similar to the ones at Hanford. And of course, these are closed, but I'm also very interested in um, uranium enrichment, any kind of other reactors. If you have some, please send me the links. I will add them to this file. Um, I've also covered all of the closed nuclear facilities. Um, some of these are old abandoned facilities. Uh, typically what they'll do is they'll just pour cement right over top of the thing and leave it there. So when you look through these closed nuclear facilities, you'll find that there are some pretty interesting stuff associated with many of them. Uh, one of the highlights, uh, one was going to be built. They were building a nuclear facility and somebody fired an RPG at it. So it was never built. Um, another one, uh, there was a large protest and they actually went and cut the head off of the guy that was running the nuclear power plant and they never built that one as well. So lots of interesting stories in these closed nuclear reactors here. Um, I hope you will check those out. There's much research to be had there. And again, um, I'm Jim Lee from climateviewer.com and I appreciate your attention today. We will try to close, cover something unique each day. If you have any suggestions for these videos, please uh, feel free to drop me a line on any one of my social media. My website is climateviewer.com slash resonated, R-E-Z-N-A-D. And uh, again, I thank you for your time. And unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better, it's not. Anything good, better than anything.